California is going through a record-breaking drought that has gone on for really decades, honestly. And this year it's gotten so bad that they don't even have water to pump up to higher levels to increase the energy storage of the electric grid. So Tesla to the rescue. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm sure many of you know, at least those of you who live in the United States, that California and the West of the United States in general is going through a really, really severe drought right now. Huge forest fires, they're causing problems all the way to New York City and Philadelphia and stuff because the wind, of course, is carrying the smoke over. It's really, really bad out in California right now. Um, we were out there in late June and early July and it already looked like, you know, I lived in California and it already looked like, you know, September in terms of the dryness of the environment already. It's already pretty much of a it, I think it's called a Mediterranean environment. It's not full desert, but the eastern part of the state is more full desert. But the, the western part of the state, because there's many mountain ranges that the water has to flow over from the ocean. So the, fir, the very, very start of California coastline is wetter. And then, of course, each mountain range that the uh, air goes over, it gets drier and drier. So by the time you get over the Sierras, which are very, very high, they're in the 14,000 foot range, it's extremely dry and it's desert there. But in between, like the San Joaquin Valley and everything, which is really the breadbasket of the United States, it's one of the breadbaskets of the United States, those areas are not supposed to be full desert, but they really have become that way over the years. And a big problem is also that there's a lot of heat involved too. So people are using air conditioning much more than they used to. California used to be kind of one of those, at least again, the western part of California used to be a place where you didn't really have to have air conditioning very, very rarely. But people are using it more and more frequently now because the temperature are getting so much higher. So there's a really nasty convergence of events that's going on right now. And the worst part of it is that they use hydroelectric storage, which means what they do is during off hours, like overnight, they pump water up to high elevations in a pool, in a, you know, a lake or something, and then they drain it out when they need to and run it through a generator to generate electricity. And they're running out of water to even be able to do this anymore. So they're running out of the, one of their main sources of peak uh, you know, load offset. So anyway, so Tesla has come to the rescue to some extent with an opt-in program for California residents. And I know it's PG&E and some of the other electric providers, but I think most of the major California electric providers, um, this will work with them. But essentially what they're doing is they're taking anybody with a solar roof and a power wall. And I'm not sure if you have to have both or if you could just have a power wall. Uh, but at the very least, the important part is the batteries and the plan. Again, this is opt in. So, you know, if you don't want to participate in this, you don't do anything and you don't have to do it. But for those who opt in, what will happen is their battery will become part of a virtual power plant or what Tesla is calling a VPP. And essentially what that means is kind of a distributed power plant, right? So if you think about what a power plant does, right, the traditional power plant, it's like coal or solar or whatever it is. It generates electricity at a centralized location and then there's, you know, of course, the wires that take it out to where it needs to go. It gets distributed and it goes to your home. This system, instead of a centralized location for power, it's a decentralized location for power. So essentially what's happening is that Tesla's all, you know, if you have, let's just say a city like Lompoc or something, I don't know, right? Just take a city in California. And let's say there are a thousand people with these power walls. And again, I'm just, these are arbitrary numbers and stuff. But anyway, what'll happen is all of those people who have opted in will then when there's a power event, and usually that's gonna happen between like three and eight o'clock in the afternoon, that's generally when the most power is needed. It's the hottest time of the day. People are coming home from work. You know, there's a huge grid load that's going on at that point. And so what happens at that point is that the batteries then from being charged by solar or by the grid or whatever it is, they start to discharge and they run electricity backwards over the lines to the main power substations, which can then redistribute this to homes that don't have power walls or solar roofs or anything like that. So if you think about this, there is a whole lot of stuff going on here. First of all, it's a real flex on Tesla's part that they are able to do this. This is not a simple thing, right? This, this ability to turn batteries from being storage units and, you know, the, the, the basic idea of these power walls is a selfish use, right? And I'm saying selfish in quotes, right? But basically, you're either pulling power off the grid overnight when the power rates are cheap, or you're taking it from solar on your roof and you're charging your battery. And then during expensive times of day, you're discharging the battery and 
powering your home using the batteries instead of using the grid and you're saving money. So that's, you know, selfish. That's the reason why people buy it is to save money. What this is instead is a very uh, sort of altruistic version of it, right? No one's getting any money out of this. Tesla says they're not being compensated. They are not compensating the customers who opt in to do this. This is a public good. As Tesla specifically says, this is a public good event right now. And essentially that public good is that you're keeping rolling blackouts from happening. If enough people participate in this, California won't have to do these hour, hour and a half rolling blackouts every day in different parts of the state. And so that would be a really, really good thing, obviously. So if you're, if you're able to participate in this and you can, I personally would highly recommend that. Of course, I live in Georgia. I don't live in California, so I can't participate. Uh, but anyway, for those who do, I highly recommend this. I think it's a good idea. It, it, you know, you are not getting compensated, although apparently those with net energy metering, NEM, those who already do things like transferring power back to the grid again, if you're doing that, you're going to get your standard rate back. So you will get compensated to some extent, but you don't get any extra bonus, you know, like a emergency overload bonus or something like that. Now, Tesla does hold that out in the future that that could become a possibility. Like if this became a regular thing in California that every summer this was a problem and every summer it was going to have to happen, I could see customers and Tesla saying, you know, you've got to pay us for this, right? We're becoming part of the power grid. Right now, it's just an emergency to get through a couple of really, really bad hot months and dry months. But if this becomes a regular thing year after year, I would expect the power companies to have to start paying people to do this, right? Because in a way, they're, they're not only saving their butts from having to do these rolling blackouts, but they're also saving them from having to build new power plants. And that's a lot of cost on the consumer because it, you know, it's not free to install solar roofs and it's not free to install these power walls. So customers do deserve eventually to be paid for this. Right now, it's kind of an emergency situation and it's a really good thing that this can be done and doing it for free for this summer is not a bad idea. But I would say if this continues year after year, that consumers should be compensated for this because they're becoming part of the power grid on a regular basis at that point. But anyway, back to Tesla. Again, think about this. This is a huge flex on Tesla's part. Tesla is saying to the world, they're saying like, hey, we can do this, right? We can create a distributed virtual power plant. We can do this out of the stuff that already exists, the hardware and software that we already have online, and our customers can you know, opt into this and eventually they could get paid money for this so this could become a profit center for them. But in terms of technology, this is a massive flex from Tesla and you should not underestimate this. So that's something that, that Tesla is signaling and the stock market, it's interesting because the stock is pretty much flat at 660 or something like that dollars. It's just been flat for a while. If anyone was really paying attention to this and the consequences of this, the stock should have taken a huge jump yesterday. This was kind of released on July 22nd. On July 22nd, the stock market should have gone up by you know 50 or $100 because people should have gone like, holy mackerel, right? Tesla keeps talking about this. Elon Musk keeps talking about how Tesla energy is going to be as big or bigger as Tesla cars eventually. And this is a clear indicator that that can happen, right? This is something where Tesla's going, we've already got this installed, this already works. We can make this happen at any point, wow. So anyway, this is Tesla really clearly indicating that they do have the capability right now to become part of any power grid in the world, I guess, but at least in the United States at this point. And that's not through these centralized mega pack structures like they have in Australia and California and other places. This is through consumers, right? This is virtual power plants, distributed energy production instead of distributed energy usage. So that's a huge flex and it's really important. And, you know, I think that you should understand that if you're a Tesla investor, this is something to really be taking note of for the future. In terms of economics, what does this mean for Tesla right now? Well, actually, I'm sure right now it's kind of an expense for them. It's something that they're doing as a freebie for California to help out the state. It's not something that they're generating revenue from yet. But again, this is, you know, this is a statement. This is something where they're saying like, we can do this right now and in the future we're probably going to expect to get paid for this right now it's a public good and all, you know all to tesla's credit that they're doing this i appreciate this and really honestly any kind of emergent situations in the world like the horrible flooding in germany you know the irony of all of this and man we've been in georgia and it, it literally rained for a month it was just the craziest thing we have had a huge amount of rain here so you know 
rainfall is being redistributed around the world right now, and Germany had that tragically gigantic amount of flooding recently, and uh, Tesla has made the, the superchargers free for use for anybody with Teslas for the period of time. I'm not sure how long it's going to last, but in order to help out with, all, with the flooding and the, the difficulties people are having with that. So clearly Tesla this summer is doing things for the public good and I really applaud that. But if this becomes kind of a long-term thing, Tesla deserves to be paid for this, right? Because they're becoming part of the power grid. And then of course to transfer over to customers, customers deserve to be paid for this in the long term because they are also part of the production system now and that's also huge. So, you know, right now Tesla's actually losing money on all of this stuff in the short term. But if you think about this over the next few years, Climate change is clearly happening. Greenland ice is melting. The, the weather patterns are changing in the world. It's, it's pretty tragic what's already happening right now. But out of this, without becoming too greedy, Tesla, because they've had foresight to put this stuff into place, deserves to make some money out of this. And the customers who've put forth the money and had the foresight to do this also deserve long term to make money out of this. So I, I think, you know, if we're looking at this this year, this is actually a loss for Tesla, and it's a loss for customers because you're using your battery to discharge to help the power grid, not to help you. So it's a loss for customers too in the short term. Again, public good, I think you should do it. <laughs> Even if it is a somewhat of a loss for you, it's not that big a deal to do. But in the long term, I think this is going to become a profit center for everyone. And by the by, to back up just a little bit, I wanna specify that what's going on here is that normally, if you're using a solar roof plus a battery pack plus a power wall together, what you do is you normally power the house through the solar roof during the day, right, when the sun is out, and the battery gets charged up a little bit if there's any excess power capacity. What's gonna happen with these events is that if they know in like two hours, so say it's noon, and they know at three o'clock in the afternoon they're gonna have to go into a power event, Tesla will send you a notification, but what it does is it flips it so that your house uses power from the grid, from the electric production, right, that somebody else is doing, and it's it takes the solar roof or whatever, and it charges up the battery with that. It doesn't run the house off of that, it charges the battery first. If the battery becomes full, of course, it flips over and it runs the house off the solar roof again. But it, it, for, it sort of flips the script. Instead of running the house primarily, charging the battery second, it charges the, the battery primarily and runs the house second so that the battery is full when this power event happens. Then of course, when the power event happens, the, the excess of the battery, so it's running your house still, right? But it's also then transferring extra power to the grid. So that's how this is actually working in reality, right? So relatively simple to understand, pretty complex to make this all happen in a distributed manner and not overload the grid and make sure it's pr producing power that it's expected to. Make sure that they actually know the power grid actually understands how much power is going to be available to them. There's a lot of complicated stuff. And that again is why this is a huge technical flex on Tesla's part. So anyway, we've talked about the consequences for Tesla and customers. What are the consequences for California itself? Well, this is something that's huge for California because it takes years to build a power plant. You have to have permissions, you have to get the land, you have to go through environmental impact studies, you have to build it, you have to you know, supply it. Even if we're talking about wind or solar, those take a long time. Uh, and they do have environmental impacts, right? So you have to do all these studies. So it can take years to build a, a new coal fire power plant, God forbid, uh, or, or solar or wind or whatever. It takes a long time to do this and build up the capacity. So that can't be done immediately. This is a short-term solution or it could become a long-term solution again, right? But this can be done very, very quickly because all of this capacity is already existent in California. And California, by the way, has very, very high electricity rates. So a lot of people have solar roofs and power walls there. So, you know, because of that, right? I live in Georgia where power is very cheap and it's a little scary how they're producing it. <laughs> they're going much more green than they used to, but it's the economics of doing a solar roof and a power wall are much, much harder to justify in the state of Georgia than they are in the state of California, where electricity rates are much, much higher than they are here. So anyway, the upshot is that there's a lot of people with solar panels on their roofs and power walls, and that means that there's a lot of capacity in California. So really what Tesla is doing here for the state of California is they're pulling their bacon out of the fire, right? They're, they're helping the, the PG&E and other California power uh, production companies out of a really, really bad situation where they're going to have to do rolling blackouts if they don't have some alternative method of producing power.
And then finally, let's look a little further afield and look at the world itself, right? Again, climate change definitely happening. We've got Australia under extreme drought in their summers, our winters in the Northern Hemisphere. We've got a lot of dryness. We've got a lot of rain in places. We've got hugely shifting weather patterns. And so more clean energy that's available and a virtualized or decentralized power production so that if one power plant goes down, think about Texas last year with its ridiculous freeze. And again, as a side note, remember that weather is not climate. One bad cold snap does not mean that global warming is not happening. Global warming and climate change are happening and they actually lead to more extreme, like at both ends. So you can get more cold snaps and more hot snaps, but generally speaking, the whole thing's moving up. But anyway, that, that event in Texas, if there had been decentralized power and that had been available to the grid, that would have really helped to mitigate the situation. So, you know, if we start to expand this beyond California and look at the world, over the next few years, as more and more people get solar panels on their roofs and get batteries in their houses, we create a situation where we can create this virtualized power plant. We can create this decentralized power plant. I like DPP instead of VPP. I like decentralized power plant. I like the idea of thinking about it in terms of a grid of power. Instead of distributing it to the grid, you're sucking it in from the grid and then redistributing it. So anyway, so anyway, I like that idea of it. I think it's an amazing thing and I think it's going to become more and more and more important because we're becoming more and more dependent on electricity for everything we do, right? It's just something that's a fact of life in most of the world at this point. And also, you know, even for developing nations where there isn't as good or as stable a power grid, having these power walls and solar roofs is going to be huge for that too, because that will allow a more stabilized grid. It will allow communities to be able to produce power for themselves when the power grid goes down, you know, the generalized power grid goes down. So both for, you know, developed countries where the power grids are already relatively stable, but power needs are growing and you've got these, you know, crazy events that are happening that's causing problems. Really really good for that, but also perhaps even more important for less economically developed countries that can stabilize their grids much, much more quickly than by having to build out many, many more power plants. And those power plants are often in these countries going to be polluting power plants. So all of this is to the good. So again, in the short term, if you live in the state of California and you have a power wall, I highly recommend participating in this program. It would be a public service. Over the longer term in California, I think that you will actually eventually get paid. And by the way, if you're considering getting a solar roof and a power wall, maybe now's the time to do that. <laughs> because you know you could get in on this and I have a feeling it's going to become a profit center in the next few years. This is also obviously going to become a very major source of income for Tesla over the years because this is a virtual power plant in the global situation is going to become more and more important. And I think that we're going to look at Tesla being in the lead in this because they've been so you know, they've thought ahead and they've really projected out how to make this happen and they've built the hardware and they've built the software to make it happen seamlessly. So good for them. Things are going to go well for Tesla. If you're a Tesla investor, I'm not an analyst. Don't, you know, again, do your due diligence, do your own research, etc. But I think this is a pretty positive sign for Tesla that they're able to do something like this. And finally, for the planet itself, as opposed to building more coal-fired power plants that are polluting and create a lot of uh, CO2 and other nasty greenhouse gases, this is a great option, so wonderful for everybody. So good job, Tesla, and for any California residents who can, you should definitely participate in this program. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and interesting. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it, and also consider subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. It's been a great summer, and you all have been wonderful and supportive, so thank you so much. And today, I have a new Patreon shout out for those who have joined recently. We have Lance Bird, and Marlon Joseph. Welcome to the team, both of you. And of course, if you're interested in joining, definitely check out the link in the description. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon 
Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc, etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a car, or a solar panel, or a solar roof, or a power wall, any of those things, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments, or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.